I started with these disposable cookie sheets. They came from Dollar Tree, two in a pack, and I grabbed three packs. I took my straight edge and I approximately measured a six inch line at the top. And then at the bottom of the cookie sheet, I did a two inch line. And I'm sorry, my video got cut off on the end here. And then I just connected the ends of the six inch and two inch line at an angle. And as you can see, the pen left an indent. And I'm then going to take my rotary cutter and a straight edge. And I'm just going to cut on the indents that I just measured. And now I have one template. And I'm going to then trace that onto a new cookie sheet. And I'm going to repeat this step until I have five blades cut out. I put those aside and I took this board that measures approximately 24 by 24 inches and I took the General Finishes Antique Walnut Gel Stain and using a Gen Foam brush, I stained the entire board. You wanna wipe any excess stain off with a paper towel I allowed that to dry and then taking some Antique Villa Wise Owl paint and a foam roller, I just rolled on top of the gel stain. Once that was dry, I took my straight edge and I measured approximately five inches and I made a mark going from top to bottom on both the left and the right side. So I made a mark every five inches. I took my tape and I lined up the tape with the marks I just made to create small pinstripe lines. And once I had all the painter's tape in place, I took more antique walnut gel stain and on a paper towel, I just wiped on top of the line that I had just taped off. You want to try to keep the stain within the tape, but if it gets a little messy, that's okay because we're going to sand this. So I removed my painter's tape and I allowed the gel stain to dry. Once everything was dry, I took a 220 grit sandpaper and I gave it a very heavy distressed sanding. Now this is why I do the gel stain underneath the antique villa because you can see here when I'm sanding, I am pulling through some of the dark stain. And this will also help take away any imperfections. I set that aside and I found one circle that measured about five and a half inches in diameter and I traced it on a piece of cardboard and I folded it in half and now I have myself a half circle. I then took this wooden circle that I had, it was three inches in diameter. I cut that in half and I glued the two half circles on top of each other. I took some more gel stain and just stained the half circle using a paper towel. And when that was dry, I took a little bit of Antique Villa on a small art brush and I did a very dry brush on top of the gel stain. I got these metal skewers from Dollar Tree as well. They came five in a pack and I grabbed two packs and I went back to my five disposable cookie sheets that we had cut. And I laid the metal skewer on top of the cookie sheet and using some E6000 glue, I adhered the metal skewer to each blade, leaving about two inches of the skewer exposed. Once I had all five complete, I glued my half circle onto the bottom of my wooden board using some E6000 glue, and then I laid my blades around the half circle. I took some E6000 
and put it on the back of the metal skewer and I adhered it to the board. I had some extra metal skewers and I put a little bend in them and then I took my bolt cutter and I cut four pieces and using some E6000 on the ends of each cut piece, I then tucked it underneath each cookie sheet. And I repeated this step three more times. And once everything was dry, I had this farmhouse stencil, and I apologize that it's upside down. And I attached the stencil with some painter's tape and using a foam dabber and some black Wise Owl paint, I dabbed over the entire stencil. You want to make sure you use a very small amount of paint. This will help avoid any bleeding underneath the stencil. And you can also use a mini foam roller. Once that was complete, I lifted the stencil and I took a small art brush and I connected any spaces that I had on the letters. And then you can leave the half circle as I painted before, but I couldn't help myself. I found this heavy metals gilding paint from Wise Owl and it's in a silver. I forgot I had this. And I decided to paint my half circles using the gilding paint. And there you go. Now we just have this really fun, inexpensive half farmhouse windmill decor, and you can hang this anywhere in your home. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Paint products can be found on our webpage at chalkitupfancy.com, and don't forget you can check out some other tutorials over on our YouTube channel or on our webpage as well. Have a great day!